guys, welcome back to another episode of the American Entrepreneur, where we interview entrepreneurs all over the world. But as long as they do business in the United States, we want to hear their story. Maybe they have something to to share with you, so you guys can apply it to your own business, so you can be successful. You know, last year I went to a uh, entrepreneurial think tank, and we had to teach e each other something new every week. And I realized that no matter what industry you're in, everybody has something to teach another person. And so we hope you're getting some value from these interviews. But today's guest, I actually know him from high school, which he followed down the entrepreneurial path also. His name is Dustin Mills, and he's done a lot of things with real estate. And I'm going to let him tell you his story. So we'd like to welcome Dustin Mills. Thank you very much for being a part of this, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mike. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Like Mike said, name's Dustin Mills. Grew up in uh, Pittsburgh with Mike. Uh, yeah, my entrepreneurial journey has taken me along the real estate investment path. So uh, post high school, went to college like a lot of people have and wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. I was an athlete in college, so I liked to compete. I know I was I was always a high energy, uh, physically fit, like to compete type of guy uh, and trying to marry that with a, you know, with a different with a with a nine to five job is kind of difficult. Uh, when I was in college, I spent a lot of my free time working out, um, trying to be the best athlete I could be, trying to chase that that particular dream. So I didn't put a lot of time into uh, determining, you know, if, if that fell through, if that didn't come to fruition, what I was going to do. So uh, as I would expect anybody, when you pick a dream, you, you go all out, you know, you try to make it happen. So that's kind of where I was at throughout college. So as that ended and uh, I didn't quite get to where I wanted to be as a professional athlete, you know, I started to try to apply the skills that I was good at. You know, I was uh, disciplined, had a good work ethic, that type of thing. How can I translate that into something that's going to earn me a living and uh, also be something you like to do? Um, so that kind of got me started in, in reading a little bit about real estate. First thing I ever read was a Rich Dad Poor Dad book. Same with uh, me, Robert. man. Same with me. Yeah. First book I ever Robert. read that was business-minded, so that's awesome. Yeah, I keep it. Uh, I actually keep it right here as a reminder. Simple book, <laughs> very very easy read. Robert Kiyosaki, The ABCs of Real Estate Investing. I actually read that as as a senior in college in my philosophy class because I didn't know what that guy was talking about. So I figured, let me uh, let me use this hour to to learn something, right? So, and I'm not knocking philosophy. It's just not for me. Uh, so I read that book and it kind of got the the wheels churning a little bit. Um, let me back up. My dad actually is very integral to my, my entrepreneurial spirit. When I was young, my dad liked to, uh, he was a truck driver, over the road truck driver, good work ethic type of guy, but your classic American go to work, put in 60, 70 hours, make overtime. He also liked on the weekends to go to the flea market and sell. Oh, I like him already. I like him already. Uh, <laughs> loved it, right? He would go to yard sales and auctions and buy things. So as a little kid, I'd always be out there trying to sell things. Um, so little did I know, he kind of laid that groundwork um, early on in me for, you know, uh, basically the ability to, to self-provide. Uh, there's nothing like, you know, selling something that you paid a dollar for for 20 and, and, and making that profit realize right there in your hand. I learned that as a, as a young kid. So fast forward, read some books about real estate post-college, realize that, you know, what I, I got to get a job. And I need to do it fairly quickly because I'm 21, 22 ish, graduating with a degree, and I, and, you know, I didn't do any of the internship things. I didn't have any uh, summer placements. I was spending all that time working out and, and chasing my baseball dream, playing baseball basically that whole time. So I knew real, I knew early on that the most important thing that I valued, at least for me, was my time on the planet, and that's that's kind of a big realization to come to, especially that young. Um, I was just blessed with that. That's, I think I, I came to that realization um, that all the money in the world doesn't matter if you spent if you spend all your time to acquire it. So I wanted to get the best bang for my buck, uh, try to earn as much money as I could as as early in life as I could, and I knew I wasn't going to do that uh, by getting, you know, becoming uh, whatever that requires me to work. 40 hours a week and retired 65. I looked at that. I was like, wow, that's 40 years. You know, how can I, how can I acquire, you know, the financial freedom that I want 
much sooner than that. So that's what that's what caused me to branch out and start to look, you know, at other ways to invest my money, to leverage my money and get the best bang for my buck on my return. So it's beautiful. Read the book, started talking to some people that were kind of doing the same things, um, mostly older people that had some rental real estate. Um, and then ran across an actual mutual friend of ours that, that was selling a property. Uh, I had been involved in a in a flip at that time. I had I had uh, basically recruited some some buddies that wanted to get in on it, and we recruited an investor to give us some money to to basically execute a flip. Um, and we did that. So we we found one, bought it. While I was in the midst of doing that, another opportunity came along. I actually sold the car I had at the time. Uh, in order to get enough capital to, to leverage to make that one happen. No uh, way. You sold your car to make sure it happened. Wow, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So I, I actually had a nice car too, and it was uh, it, it was a nice little sports car for a 24 year old kid. It was it was awesome. But I had some equity in it, and I knew you know that that play would be a much long, much a much smarter play and a, a long term investment that that would set me up. So I unloaded that thing, and, and while I was in the midst of a flip. Bought my first uh, my first personal rental unit, and then from there, um, you know, as uh, the hardest thing is doing the first one. I'll tell anybody when it comes to real estate, if you if you make a good buy the first time, you set yourself up for success down the road. Doesn't mean that you can't eventually screw something up, and you probably will. But the key is to if you can hit a home run on the first one, it really gives you a nice little head start, and we were fortunate enough to do so. So. And it, hit them on the first it, one, and here we are. That first, that first investment. So, what what caused you to just go all in and, and take the plunge? Was it timing? Was it the trust in the seller? Was it uh, trust in the people around you that you knew it was a good property? How did you make that decision? Because there's some people who I talk to on here that are just they're 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 afraid to make that first jump. So, if anybody's watching, how did you know? I guess is the best yeah. best way to put it. So it took me about two years. When I first started talking about it, I was, uh, you know, kind of vetting, and I started in my, my circle of friends. I've started vetting some guys uh, that I knew had some skills and would be interested in doing something like this. And it took took about two years. We were looking at, I can't tell you how many properties I looked at, but uh, we went around looking at properties, and we were just like everybody else, super hesitant. We were finding every reason that all these properties wouldn't work. You know, you're trying to you're trying to get the one that just screams to you, I'm gonna make you money. So what ended up happening, the, the, the key to, that allowed us to, to really jump or dive all in, so to speak, you read a lot of these books, it says just jump and, and you'll make it happen, sink or swim, it's the easiest way to do it, put your back against the wall. What we were doing, we were working odd jobs out of college, this was right around uh, 08, 09, um, the economy was kind of crappy at that time, the housing market had just, uh, you know, did its thing, um, plunged, and it was very difficult to find the, the quote unquote great full time job. Um, so we were doing uh, the guys that I had recruited, so to speak, to, to kind of partner up with me on this one. We were all working two and three of my part time jobs just to get, you know, just to make as much money as we could while still applying for our quote unquote careers. So with that being said, we were we were kind of putting in way too many hours for way less money. Um, talking about wanting to buy a, a piece of property to flip um, and it was it was one of those deals where the pressures um, putting in so much time making a little bit of money it, it looking at an opportunity to make a lot more and do something you actually like and are interested in and have researched and and have you know kind of sold yourself to the concept and you know, especially when you're when you're out recruiting people you're selling the concept and they want to know how many have you done you know <laughs> well, we're, ready, we're getting ready to do one so you, you believe in yourself, you just ha there's no credibility built up behind you. So it's like it's tough to to get momentum if you believe in yourself. It's just tough to show it, right? Is that what you're Absolutely. And what and what happened was the the pressures of having of not having the cushy job or the the easy career path allowed not only myself who had already sold sold all in on that the the two people that I recruited to sell all in. They're like, well, you know what? We don't really have anything to lose. I'm working 70 hours at a landscape company and part time with an electrician. Meanwhile, I have an electrical engineering degree. You know, one of my buddies. Let's do it. Let's try it out. It's not gonna. It can't hurt, right? So, 
once you put everything on paper and you see that the numbers make sense and everything's kind of you know where you think it should be a lot of those negatives that you put uh, that, that start creeping into your mind don't look so big because the back end the back end pressures are making those potential risks look much smaller so that's that's what allowed us to get started having a non-set career that that was cushy so to speak and we were complacent with um combined with this uh, a particular opportunity that came across where the numbers made sense and it fit the model um we figured we'd try it you, you got to try it before you uh, if you never try it you don't want to regret it so we figured we got to try it and see what happens yeah i think that no, nothing to lose mentality I've, I've read a lot of books and it seems like there's a central theme with that too where if you're giving up a lot that maybe you have a family and you have to make that two hundred thousand dollars a year and, and you don't want to risk their lives so but if it's on you and, and the people around you and they you know you don't like the job you're in it's not making enough money and it, you kind of you hate what you're doing what do you have to lose i mean you're young enough where you can recover so there is that feeling that you know i, I believe in myself enough that even if i screw up here i can fix it later down the road is, it, is that Absolutely. something that you kind of thought about before you did it a hundred percent especially when we were young like that we knew you know being healthy uh, able body young men we knew if we failed here we were going to be able to recover uh, you know uh, barring the fact that anybody got injured which you know you don't plan on but at that particular time we knew we were going to be able to recover worst case scenario we could go back i'll pick up a third job and and, and make things happen um the biggest thing though is and I liken this to my athletic career, was you have to trust your preparation. Like I said, it took two years. I read a lot of books. I was looking at tons of properties. I was in and out of a bunch of things. I saw a bunch of different stuff. Um, you know, in the first 10 properties I saw, things that I looked at and they were deal breakers for me, I look at now and laugh. You know, I, I could easily fix that. That's nothing. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of the unknown. It's a lot of the unknowns that you're going to learn through experience. But the biggest takeaway, and this is whether you're 20 years old or 50, trust your preparation. Because if you put in the work to prepare and practice, just like a sport, you're going to improve. So for me, the biggest thing was I put these these properties through my model based on all the books and, and, and all of the advice that I had gotten from people who, had, who have done it and have succeeded. Um, and I wasn't trusting my model for that first two years. You know, I was trying to find negatives trying to look for failures, allowing the fear of failing uh, to prevent me from, from starting sooner. Um, so the biggest thing that I would say is to anybody doing this, no matter what age you are, whether you have years to recover or you don't, if you prepare properly, trust that preparation because it's not going to lie. If you're doing your research right, if, if, if you take what you think is your proper preparation, vet it with somebody else, let them confirm that. And if they do, trust it because it's it, it You've done the work. You've done the practice, quote unquote, uh, to get the result that you want. Now, you you brought up before uh, about being competitive. Now, I'm a super competitive guy. I always have been, and I know back in school you were always the. For anybody watching, Dustin Mills was one hell of an athletic uh, individual. So uh, I, I always knew that you guys or you always had the competitive drive. So. I always tell people that if you're not competitive, business is really not for you because. For you, you have to stand up and tell people you're the best at something or you want to compete every day because it's really a competition every day to try to make money, to, to, to be better than your competitors. How important do you believe that competitive gene is for an entrepreneur to, to succeed in this world? Do you believe it's an essential quality or do you think that other people can get by without it? How important do you think it is? I think it's, I mean, I think it's pretty essential. doesn't mean that you can't get lucky and, and get by without it, but I, I believe it's, it's incredibly essential because uh, with successes um, come people that, for, quote, for lack of a better term, want to hate, right? Yeah. So you're going to constantly be told by the naysayers that it's not a good idea, it's not this, it's not that. I'm, and I'm sure you are too, Mike, one that responds very well to somebody telling me I can't do something. For sure. I love it. Right. So when someone tells me I can't do something, that's that's the biggest motivator to me. Not, not everybody is that way. Not everybody likes that that negative reinforcement and rises to the challenge, which is fine. Um, but you need to at least be aware that it's going to happen in this game. If that's not your personality type. If you like positive reinforcement and you're not uh, you, you want to avoid confrontation, 
you can get by in this world as long as you are aware that it's going to occur. Um, when I bought, when we bought our first house, I had my own family members telling me uh, it was a terrible idea. You know, <laughs> I hope you guys break even, that type of stuff. Um, and that was just motivation for me. That competitive edge is what makes me want to prove those people wrong. So I think if you have that, and, and that's a, that's essential to you being uh, to being successful 100%. And if not, please be aware that those things are going to happen and do what you need to do to channel that negativity away from you. Yeah, big believer in, the, in, in, in proving the naysayers wrong. I love that. It is, it's a big uh, part of my drive. So uh, I see it's in you too. Uh, now, I did hear the, the, the little baby there. His name's Chase Allen, who just was yes. a couple months old, right? Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> he's three months old, hanging out with dad right now. Um, now and I'll tell you what, that's put a whole new perspective on my uh, my drive here, buddy. That is what I want to ask you about. Now, having the family, I know you got married in the past year, maybe a year and a half, somewhere there? Yep, got married last year. We bought a home. Now, how much does that play a factor in every decision you make? especially with the entrepreneurial uh, decisions you're going to be making. So is it more of a drive? Does it add more pressure, but also more win in your sales to kind of provide for them? But also, this is what I would think, and I'm not a father, but to show the kid that I'm going after my dreams so I can tell you to go after your dreams. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Give, give me. I apologize, Mike. Give me one no, second no, here. My, uh, my volume has gone down. Let me move him a, a second. <laughs> And I'll answer that real yeah. quick. Give me one second. Yeah, so guys, I was, uh, you know, I, I talked to a lot of people out there. It seems a majority are the, the 20 to 26-year-old people who are just getting going in the entrepreneurial world. And maybe they don't have a family yet, but it seems right here we have a perfect example that with Dustin, he has a kid. And I think, to me, it would be more of a motivation uh, element to, to, to show that to the kid I'm going after exactly what I want. So follow my lead because I'm doing it. And if I didn't go after my dreams, how could I tell another person to go after theirs? So Dustin, the question I ask you is basically, how much does that play a factor in every decision you make, having that kid and the wife now? Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, it goes back to at a young age when I talked about having time be the most valuable thing for me, it's it's even more valuable than I ever thought now. Back then, it was about, you know, having the free time to work out and, and be the best athlete I could. Now, it's, it's even more so valuable because I want to see uh, not only every little thing that he does as he begins to develop, um, but I want to spend that time with my wife and my family and do it as a unit. So it has actually increased my entrepreneurial drive um, a thousand fold because I want nothing more than to be able to control my schedule so that I can see and do and experience his entire life sequence before it's my time to check out on this planet. Um, and to touch on the credibility issue, absolutely. I want to teach him by example. Um, I'm not one that responds well to somebody, the, the do as I say, not as I do type of people that you've grown up with in your life. Um, I can remember my mother getting mad at me. She'd tell me not to do something and, or, or she did something and, and I'm not allowed to do it. You know, I would, I would question that all day long, you know, yep. teachers used to get mad at me for that type of stuff. As a young kid, I was called insubordinate more than one time, but, um, so I definitely don't want to be that example to him. I, if I'm telling him to do something, um, you know, I want him to know that dad was willing to put in the work or the time or the, or the effort to do what he's telling me to do. Uh, I used to coach baseball, uh, just post, um, college graduation and, and, and a lot of the workouts and the conditioning that I remember coaches putting me through, I remember looking at them, little pot bellied guys, put me through all these sprints and I knew they, they weren't doing this stuff. And, yeah. and I, and I took that principle to heart when I, when I began to coach, I, I used to tell my guys, listen, I'm not going to make you do anything that I myself either haven't done or aren't willing to do. And I had a ninth grader call me to the, uh, call me to the tape one day. We were doing a, after a whole day of practice, we were going to do a time two mile run. And he said something about, you know, Coach Mills wouldn't do this. So I put my running shoes on and had to beat everybody that day uh, just to establish my credibility. <laughs> and I'm not going to ask you to do something that I myself wouldn't do. And I want to be an example for my son. That's awesome, man. Now, anybody out there who's looking to get into real estate or even just take that entrepreneurial jump, there's one thing. I know there's plenty of them, but if there's one thing that you 
really stick to in your life and that you can share with others? What is one extremely valuable lesson? Maybe you've already talked about it, but what is one thing that you want the viewers to see here to take with them? Yeah, trust your preparation, 100%. I brought it up. You're going to spend time to prepare. You're going to read books. Uh, you've decided to, to go into whatever venture it is that you may be going into, whether it's speaking or real estate or you want to start a restaurant. You've put some amount of time in to make that decision. There's something that appeals to you. So all of that preparation that you've put in, trust it. So when you go all in, it's you're not just jumping off a cliff blind. You're trusting your practice or your preparation. And that's a that's both apl ap applicable in athletics as and now that I've seen as well as in life. So you could be a lawyer, trust your preparation for your case. You could be a doctor, trust your preparation. You know, you could be a surgeon, trust your preparation on on everything that you've practiced. You don't go in blind on and on anything. And being an entrepreneur is the same way. Being a restaurant owner, being a dentist, being a real estate mogul, being a public speaker, trust your preparation. You are practicing. You've done something that has allowed you to make a decision that says, hey, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Trust that preparation. Yeah, and I, I'm a big believer in, uh, and I've really realized this in the past couple of years, but business in general is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And you really have to take your time. You have to enjoy it. And you have to you know, uh, build something along the way. So it's not going to happen overnight. And at the end of the marathon, you know, years from now, you will have something and it's going to be yours and it's going to take uh, a, a ton of preparation, a ton of time, a, a ton of resources. So you don't want to think that going into this is going to happen, you know, in a weekend. Just I, I believe in that. So preparing yourself for the long haul is a big piece to it. So it's good oh, stuff, Stephanie. man. That's great, man. I, I really appreciate you joining, man. I, you're the first person from uh, the high school days that uh, that I'm getting on here. So so thank you very much for 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 everything you talked about. And also, did you? you know, have any websites, any Instagram, any Facebook, anything you want to share for anybody to reach out to you for any other information to get a hold of you? Or? Yeah, yeah, you can check out the uh, website. It's uh, aahomehealers.com. It's a uh, more licensed contractor that does some some renovations here in, in Pennsylvania, mostly uh, flips and apartment rentals. But check out the website. Feel free to, to send me any inquiries if you have any questions about something. Um, I'm also a licensed realtor in this area. I'd, I'd love to reach out and help anybody that's looking to, to get their first investment or at least just get some feedback uh, from somebody that's, that's bought a couple and helped the people help a couple people get their investment portfolio going. It's awesome. Well, thank you very much, Dustin. I really appreciate it. It sounds like Chase is uh, getting jealous of uh, me taking your attention, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go here. But, uh, but yeah, guys, if you have any questions, rental, property, real estate related, maybe reach out to Dustin. He's a hell of a guy. So. Um, I hope you're getting some values from these videos that we're providing you, and uh, we're going to have a lot more here in the next coming weeks, so hopefully you stay tuned. Remember, guys, the American entrepreneur will always create more. Thank you.